So is Aaron Rodgers to blame for the Packers losing the NFC Championship game? No, of course not. Of course he is not to blame for them losing the NFC Championship game. He was the only reason that it was even close. Uh, I went back and watched the tape, and I just, I I don't know. I can't believe this narrative is even slightly out there of he choked in the fourth quarter because he was fantastic, and he's the only reason this game was even close. But I wanted to have an open mind, and so I started watching the tape, and one of the first plays, I was like, oh my god, this was a, you know, there was something wide open. Rodgers missed something here. So this is the play concept. It's going to be a zone coverage blitz. It's a heavy blitz from Tampa Bay. They're trying to get pressure on Rodgers early. And so Rodgers is going to have to get rid of the ball quickly. Now, Rodgers, really there's two routes that I think that he could look at before the ball is snapped. Two pre-snap reads he could make. One to his left, one to his right. The one to his left would just be hitting a back uh, sort of underneath and picking up some yards that way. And honestly, I understand why he wants to look at that one. Valdez Scantling getting uh, further deep, that one could also work. But again, Rodgers has to kind of make this decision pre-snap. And also, I should specify, uh, I think I didn't mention it earlier, this is in the fourth quarter. Everything I'm going to show here is going to be in the fourth quarter, you know, after Green Bay made it a five-point game. Uh, this is what happened. And watch, I mean, as you see, Valdez Scantling, he was open, but Rodgers just made the wrong pre-snap read. Do I want to kill him for that? You know, he's already in a throwing motion. He had to get rid of the ball quick because of the blitz. To me, this just feels so nitpicky, and I hate criticizing guys on plays like this. I think that it's something that a lot of people like to, you know, bring something up. Oh, look, he could have thrown it there and it would have been wide open. What a horrible decision. But you have to make some of these decisions so quickly that uh, unless you're God, you're not going to know where everybody is on the field at all times, especially when there's a heavy blitz coming. And this play still does end up working out. Like, watch, Rodgers makes this throw. It was a good tackle. They gained five yards, though. I mean, like, that's fine. Like, you're not mad at that. Now it's a third down and medium. They weren't able to convert on the third down. But, like, to me, that's a fine play to make, I think. However, in the spirit of fairness, if you want to say that that's part of him, quote-unquote, choking, fine. I'll give you that one, even though uh, I'll reluctantly give you that one because I don't really think it's fair. And, in fact, there's another one that I think is kind of in that same category of, I don't really blame him that much, but if you want to blame him, I suppose you can. This is now nine minutes left uh, in the fourth quarter. It's a first down and 10, and uh, here's how it's going to work. It's going to be a cover two play. It's uh, man coverage, cover two man, and you see the route right there. That's Devontae Adams' route, which on paper, when you look and see it's man coverage, you see there's two safeties deep. You don't know if they're going to stay deep. They're kind of faking as though they could be running like, you know, one could run in, the other could stay deep and they could do a robber concept, but you know that there's a realistic possibility this is cover two man. That's what Tampa Bay is kind of showing here. So for Rodgers, maybe the the Devontae Adams route is something he could look at, but, you know, I understand why pre-snap you might not be looking at that first. So Rodgers takes a snap, looks at Lazard first, and then kind of at the last second is looking at Adams, and you see it looks like Adams might get open, uh, there's pressure immediately though, so if Rodgers is going to throw this, he has to throw it right now. He pretty much has to already be in the throwing motion because the pressure came so quickly. So again, if you want to blame Rodgers for not immediately noticing this, throwing up a jump ball and hoping Devontae Adams gets open, uh, that's your right, I guess. But to me, this is just what drives me crazy about the the people that only blame a quarterback. You got to blame the right tackle here, and I'm not going to pick on him, but like, giving up the pressure immediately is the clear problem here, not Aaron Rodgers. But people want quarterbacks to be perfect, and they don't care if an offensive tackle makes a mistake, which again, it happens. I think that we criticize guys too much for one or two bad plays. I think it's insane to blame Rodgers, even though I've seen this play before. I know Adams is going to eventually get open. How does he know that? And as you see, Rodgers goes down immediately. I don't know if Rodgers would have had the time to get it there anyway. So that's just a it's it's just silly, and and to me, these are the biggest mistakes Rodgers made. There were so many plays where there was nothing he could do. Like, let's go over to this one again. This is, once again, it's going to be the same coverage, and they're showing the same coverage, so they're not really hiding a ton. This is second down and 10. Uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling running a deep route towards the sideline, but again, those kind of deep routes can potentially work, as we saw with Devontae Adams on the last play. If there's not pressure, since Tampa Bay has both their safeties closer to the middle, the sidelines can be a bit more open than a traditional cover two man play. So Rodgers takes a snap. He has to get rid of the ball quickly. He doesn't know if he's going to have time. And this throw, the timing is just a little bit off. And I think part of that was Jamal Dean 
did a good job of slowing down Valdez Scantling at the line, which sort of forced him to not be able to get to his top speed as quickly as he would have liked and kind of threw off the timing. So again, like if you if you hate Aaron Rodgers, you could say, oh, he missed the throw. If you have a brain, I think you have to realize that's just good defense. And I also want to be clear, like I feel like some comments are going to say no one's blaming Aaron Rodgers. There are people doing that in the media. Like it's not a ton of people that is happening. I, I've heard it. And if you want to blame him for those, you got to also give him credit for really an incredibly clutch, great throw late in this game where this was that final drive. It's a second down and one. Uh, they're on their own 43, but there's four minutes left. So, you know, you're running out of time here. You really need to get the ball into uh, scoring position so a, a big play could help. It's again that cover two man that Tampa Bay is playing as they're playing a bit more of a cautious approach, which I think makes sense here. And you have Valdez Scantling, who's going up against Sean Murphy Bunting. Murphy Bunting has picked off Rodgers in this game on a very similar route. So this is kind of a, a dangerous throw for Rodgers because he knows, like, an interception, that might be the game. However, he takes the snap, and you're going to notice that he just makes an incredible throw. I mean, that's just, it's very similar to the interception, except it's just a better throw. And they get the first down there uh, and, you know, are able to get the ball inside the the 35 on that one and that's just a really nice play from Rodgers really clutch throw but again no one's going to care about that because they lost and finally let's talk about another just thing I, I just don't get uh, maybe someone in the comments can can help me out here Rodgers is getting blame for this situation so I paused it right here it's this is the situation right he's trying to uh, run but then he decides to pump fake throw it to Devontae Adams and uh, Adams is the one who I've circled closest towards the the bottom of the screen, sort of in the middle area of the field. You can kind of see what he sees there, right? Like, if he throws it low and away, you can kind of see that one maybe being complete. It's not a zero chance. It's a small chance, but it's not a zero chance. On top of this, in the other black circle, you have, you know, Carlton Davis is the outside guy here where he could potentially run and make a tackle on Rodgers. But... Rodgers could make a pump fake, which could, you know, fool them into thinking that it's going to be a passing play and then run and get the touchdown that way. You know, you see him now. I pause it as he's kind of throwing the ball. So if he did a pump fake, that could maybe help himself out a little bit and maybe he could get into the end zone. That's what people are saying. But I feel like people are forgetting one key part about this play. Those guys. You see how Jason Pierre-Paul and Sue both have running starts as they're trying to chase down Aaron Rodgers. I don't know who these people are that think Aaron Rodgers can outrun Jason Pierre, Paul, or Sue. I really don't, but uh, they're wrong. Rodgers goes for a low percentage play, and it falls incomplete. And, and it, honestly, it's not that I don't think he scores a touchdown. I don't think he gains much. I think he gets maybe a yard or two on that play because of how Sue and Pierre, Paul were approaching him. Like, watch. I'll show the other angle because I think this one will give you a better just uh, view of how close the other defensive linemen were. I paused it right here. Like, Pierre Paul's really the guy where I just don't see how... Rodgers would have to take such an angle towards the sideline to try and get something going. And you also see how far outside uh, Carlton Davis is compared to Rodgers. So, Rodgers is going to have to make the pump fake to keep uh, Carlton Davis inside. He's probably going to have to break a tackle, which I just don't know. Maybe he could do. Maybe. But it seems unlikely. I think people sort of don't realize, because these defensive linemen are so big, how quick they are. I mean, Sue and Pierre Paul, especially, are two of the fastest defensive linemen in the game. And that's just, it's not happening. So again, takes a small percentage chance, and it was good defense. Sometimes you got to give credit to the team that won, instead of just criticizing the quarterback that lost. I thought Rodgers played great. In the first three quarters, he was fantastic. In the fourth quarter, the Bucks defense kind of held on. And there wasn't much Rodgers could do. He maybe made a mistake or two, but find me a quarterback that you can't say that about in any game ever, right? Like, you're going to always make a mistake or two. You just are. So yeah, I mean, I figured I'd make this video. Again, 98% of you clicking on this video, I'm sure already agreed with me, but uh, for the 2% that didn't, hopefully I changed your mind. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And listen, I'm always going to talk about the narratives that are out there, even if they're stupid. Uh, so and that's what I wanted to do here. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.